Hi, everyone, and welcome to Pro Writing Aid 101 for Business Writers. I'm Michael McGuire, Pro Writing Aid's Growth Marketing Manager, and today I'm joined by Tom Wild, our Head of Client Solutions. It's wonderful to see you all here today. We have a fantastic session planned for you guys. So for today's agenda, we are going to be going over some of the most important reports for business writers, including the real-time checker and goal sidebar, the summary report, the readability report, the style report, and the sticky sentences report. Then if we have time, because our goal is, is to get you guys in and out the door in 45 minutes so you get an extra 15 minutes back to your day, we are going to also cover some of the other places that you can use Pro Writing Aid, including in the Chrome extension and the brand new one that we are very proud of, PowerPoint. Now, of course, we want this to be driven by what you guys would like to know. So if at any point during the walkthrough you have questions, please feel free to throw them in the Q&A. We will have five to ten minutes at the end of the session to answer any questions you have. If for some reason we are unable to get to your question, please feel free to email it to hello, H-E-L-L-O, at prowritingaid.com. Just put in the subject line, you are one of our attendees for our Business 101, and we will make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, Tom. Well, I think that is all the housekeeping wrapped up. So over to you for the walkthrough. Thank you, Micah. Welcome, everybody. Great to have you with us for another Business 101 here at Pro Writing Aid. Um, it's also, I spend a lot of my time talking to uh, corporate customers, business users who are looking to solve some of their problems with Pro Writing Aid. And the common problems that we come across, there's a really broad range, but essentially, many of them boil down to the same things. Many people who are using Pro Writing Aid are looking to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of the writing process. Maybe have that little bit of a safety net to make sure that actually those obvious, those grammar, punctuation, spelling issues are caught before you hit send. Sometimes it's about building confidence, giving you the confidence that your writing is on point and your readability is as effective as could be. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to help you improve the standard of your communications. And that leads to many benefits. It could be increased levels of sales. It could be happier customers. Uh, it could be happier colleagues because your internal communications are hitting the spot. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. And for the purpose of the demo, we'll focus by and large on the web editor to start with. Uh, this is a great place to see the Pro Writing Aid user interface that you can see on the screen in front of you now. This is just a sample document, a sample email that we're using for the demo today. Um, and it, as Micah said, we'll go in to look at some of the other uh, integrations that we have. Pro Writing Aid is designed to be wherever you write. So we have a really wide range of integrations, meaning that if you're doing your writing within Word, within Google Docs, with a separate web application, or you just want that support in the uh, apps on your web browser, or whether you're using Chrome or Firefox or whatever, then we're there. We're with you every step of the way. And of course, you're writing in many different ways in many different places. So that's an important um, level of support. OK, so what do you do when you've got Pro Writing Aid set up and you're wanting to work on a document, whether it's an email or report or whatever? Let's go over a couple of basic settings just to start with. You can see my settings tab up here. Any settings you change here are going to be reflected in whichever integration you're using. The key one here is about which variation of English you're using. So are you writing in UK or British English? Is it US English, Australian or Canadian? Uh, we only work in English at the moment. We are looking at um, other languages. Um, and for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to select US English, which means it's going to pick up those, uh, those differences between UK and US English. So if I'm using S when I write realize, it's going to identify that as a UK spelling and something that should be updated to be spelt with a Z instead. OK, let's get into the reports. Now, I often describe, uh, customers of mine have described pro writing aid as uh, your second pair of digital eyes or the editor on your shoulder. As I turn on the real time checker, and this is your friend, okay, this is where you should be starting your journey. It's like the, like I said, the editor on your shoulder. It's constantly looking for mistakes, but also improvements. Okay, and let's remember writing is a broad and it's a personal subject. And to a degree, it's quite subjective too. 
in many areas there's no writer there's no wrong but your role in as a writer in however you know whatever you're wherever you're doing your writing is to make the transfer of the information from the screen to your reader's brain as simple and straightforward as possible so although some of these areas are subjective we're always pro writing it is always going to be pointing you in that direction of clarity concision um less is often more let's not forget that okay so i've turned on the real-time checker this little 39 icon it shows me that i've got 39 potential improvements or mistakes to fix in this one document each of those mistakes or improvements is underlined they're color coded and if i go to my sidebar and click on the improvements tab you can see i've got two tabs let's click on improvements i can filter what i'm looking for i've got style spelling grammar passive voice if you just want to look at one just select that item For the demo we're going to look at all four and then i've got two choices i can do my my first pass my edit in the document body itself or i can use this sidebar here i prefer working in a document body many people don't like don't necessarily want to have her writing aid on all the time when they're writing maybe they wait to the end of a paragraph or the end of a page or chapter whatever so it's up to you in some areas how you use it uh, i tend to have it on the whole time uh, but i and then I, when i review i work in the body of the document itself and as i hover over any of these highlights you'll see the message appear now i've just realized i've got a couple in here i should have filtered out before we started i've got some custom rules built here so i'm just going to ignore these for a second because they wouldn't be showing up in your version so let me just uh, remove those okay so i've got quite a few custom rules in here let's get into um, the body of the document so here i can start just by looking at okay hover hover on the first highlight and it tells me i've got a possibly unknown word because i've misspelled believe and to be honest any grammar checker should should be able to tell you this with pro writing you have a couple of options i can add that to my dictionary i can ignore it um but actually what i want to do is change it i want to improve it so i'm going to hit that uh hit the teal area and it'll change it okay i'm really sorry here we've got a couple of uh, i like i said these custom rules are going to be showing through this demo uh, but just bear with me okay we've got a possible missing determiner so i'm missing the in front of right so i can make the change again i can ignore ignores is your friend it's going to remember that ignore so when you come back to this document later it will still ignore that item disable use very cautiously because when you disable a rule you disable it for good in all applications um and to re-enable you have to come back to us you need to come back to our support team so be very wary of um, disabling rules so here i'm just going to make the change again and move on okay this is a great example of a readability rule i should remove all of or i can remove all of because it's not going to affect the uh, impact or the meaning of the sentence but it reduces the words that my reader has to read so let's take it out and just reduce that word count okay into the um i know sorry one more item in this second paragraph again started doing classic example of where i'm using two verb forms or actually i could just use one verb more powerfully so rather than just saying um started doing let's just say done correct it and move on with some of these corrections you'll notice um i think this is a good example okay a number of let's change that to several yeah with some of these corrections you'll notice this little information icon here and this is a really important feature of pro writing it because it's how you uh, build some of those skills and capabilities around grammar punctuation um, and uh and linguistics if i click on the information icon so in fact let's look at the issue first it's identified a passive verb now passive verbs are a real big problem in business writing um, but many of us don't understand what a passive verb or passive voice is the same thing um 
Essentially, when we read, we are accustomed to receiving information in the format of subject, verb, object. But when you're using the passive voice, you're switching that around. You're delivering the object, then the verb, and sometimes you're leaving out the subject in, in its entirety. And we do this in business writing, sometimes for good reason, but we tend to default doing to doing it because we think it makes us sound more businessy. We think it makes us sound more important. But actually, if you write in the active voice where you can, you're helping your customer, you're helping your reader, sorry, because you're delivering information in the way that they are expecting to read it. Now, if I don't understand or know what the passive voice is, if I click on this information icon, it'll open a contextual learning window that will tell me all about that particular grammar point. Okay, And it's even got an embedded video featuring some quotes, some Jackie Chan quotes, demonstrating how to transfer from the passive to the active. So there's some learning in there to reinforce what you're doing uh, and reinforce your learning within the tool. There's a link to a full article that will take you to our blog. We've got a really rich blog full of content that is all around the subject of better writing. And then back to the tool itself, you'll see that the, the machine learning here is trying to figure out, okay, what am I trying to say? How would I try, how would it transfer that passive sentence into an active sentence? Uh, uh, because I haven't got a, a, a subject in that sentence, uh, it's trying to guess, it's giving me some options. So it's just down to me to select which one I'm gonna use. There we go. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. I'm just working top to bottom, uh, when you get into the habit, you're making really quick changes. It takes a few minutes to work through a, a, a document, but the incremental improvements speak for themselves. So that is the first place to start. The real-time checker is going to deliver significant improvements on its own. But let's get into some of these deeper reports because there's an awful lot of depth um, and content here that is gonna be relevant to improving your documents and improving your skills and knowledge. The first thing to say is pro writing A, or don't forget that pro writing is built for all types of writers and these reports are built for all types of writers. So there will be some here that don't necessarily apply to the type of writing you do. Maybe they're more relevant for creative writers. A typical pro writing A user is probably using three to four different reports on a regular basis. Now, which reports they use really depends on you. As I said, writing is a broad and personal subject and we've all got different strengths and weaknesses. So take your time, particularly in that first month of using Pro Writing Aid, take your time to familiarize yourself with some of these reports and you'll get a feel for which deliver the most value and which you enjoy using. Okay, to help with that, the summary report is a really good place to start. Okay, I've just realized I've jumped straight ahead without showing you one last feature on the real-time checker. I'm really sorry. Let's just rewind very quickly and look at goals because this is really important. Goals is how we tell you how your writing measures up. So it breaks your writing down into a bit more of a science than an art and presents a range of metrics to do with the specific document type you have selected. So goals allows me to select the type of document I'm writing, an email in this case, and then we'll present metrics relevant to that document type. So here I can see that my grammar and spelling for this document is rated at 84%. My target zone is 80% or higher, so I'm on target there. But with style and style guide compliance and sentence length and business jargon, I'm not on target. I'm way off in some cases. Business jargon, right, the tolerance level here is quite low. You shouldn't have more than one piece of business jargon in your document. In fact, it's less than one. It's effectively zero. And I've got six, so I'm off target. So this just gives you an idea of where you should be focusing your efforts. It's going to help contribute into knowing which reports to run later on. What you'll see with some of the, or well, with all of them, is they're dynamic. So as I make changes to the document, those scores will change, the sliders will move. So you're getting real-time feedback. Just bear with me to say.
sorry. Um, and so you will see that the score sliders will move as I accept changes. And how I'd recommend using goals is to build an idea, use it to build a an idea of where your benchmark is. You may not be hitting 80% with every document you're writing. Maybe you're hitting 70%. And when you start reviewing a document and it's at 40, 50%, you know you've got some work to do. So it helps contribute to what your scores, uh, to where you should focus your efforts. Right, let's go back in and have a look at that summary report, which is the next step of the process. And you guys will notice that the summary report and the goals report do look somewhat similar. So oftentimes people ask us, well, why should I use the summary report versus using the goals report? And really, this is a matter of what um, your workflow is like. A lot of cases, we recommend using the goal sidebar and the real-time checker if you have shorter documents and if you're writing in real time. So let's say you're working on an email or you're working on a short report, the goal sidebar and the real-time checker are especially helpful. For cases where you have super long documents, let's say it's 10 pages or more, or you have something that you wrote a while back and you're coming back to edit it, then the summary report might be a better choice because as you can see here, we actually have a breakdown of both where your document looks good and where your document might need some work. And just because you have those groupings right in front of you, sometimes it can be a little easier than trying to scroll back and forth through the goal sidebar to find out where your document might be a little bit weak. Yeah, thanks, Micah. Great point. Um, Okay, so in the summary report, we've got a full display of all the scores available in, in the tool. So, and it's gonna, you, you'll get, from, you'll become familiar with how they're laid out, but essentially you've got grammar, spelling, and style as your three headline scores. They're the most important items in writing any document. And you can see again, I'm below target in each of those. Then I've got all the areas where my document's looking great, a whole range of them. And you'll see that I can click through. If I want more information, just click on the item, and it takes me, in this case, the readability section of that report. I can see my readability grade, so readability of grade 10, and we're recommending a score of 10 or lower. But look, I'm getting extra information here and some really clear visuals as well. So my paragraph level readability, I've actually got some paragraphs that are very, or classed as very difficult to read. So maybe I will go in and run that readability report in a minute. Let's go back to the top. Here are the areas where my document needs more work. We know about grammar, spelling, and style already, but I've also got sentence length, I've got business jargon, and I've got glue index. So we'll start and have a look and jump in and have a look at a few of these um, and see what we can do to improve the document. Okay, so a sent the reports work in two different ways. With a report like style or grammar, what you're gonna see is items that are grouped together some of these will, will have been highlighted already in the in the real-time checker, but you can see all my examples of passive voice are here. Um, all of my business jargon phrases are here, and I can click through to any of them in the document. So here we go, cutting edge. My suggestion is use groundbreaking instead. That sounds sensible to me. Let's make that change. Um, bandwidth, okay. Mm, yeah, okay, so cap capacity is spare capacity is much better, less jargony. Let's make that change. So I can work through category by category and grammar is going to be exactly the same. It's going to look at my spelling issues and it's going to group together my grammar issues. And here you'll see things like where you've got extra unnecessary spaces, you've got comma splices. Um, yeah, we've got missing commas. So there's some punctuation elements in there. And these all allow you to make those one click changes. So grammar and spelling, uh, grammar and style are two reports that almost every business writer uses, um, probably our most commonly used reports across the entire tool. Some of the other reports work on a more advisory basis. Um, and when we looked earlier, we saw that sentence length and readability both need some work. So let's have a look at those. Readability gives me some really simple to understand readability statistics. We're most familiar with Flesh Reading Ease and Flesh Kincaid grade. Um, and for those of you who aren't aware, if you're trying to improve your readability statistics, i.e. make your document more, more readable, more, sorry, easier to read, um, 
what they're looking for, how they calculate readability scores is broadly, they look at the average number of words per sentence and the average number of syllables per word. So they're promoting short, shorter sentences and shorter vocabulary or less complex vocabulary. So here we have the paragraph level readability and my one very difficult to read paragraph, I can already see it in the document actually, it's that one underlined in red. Flesh reading use score is 39.9. Really, when it comes to flesh reading use score, you should be up 60s and 70s. Um, now, to make the changes to improve the readability in this document, if you were to ask AI to do this for you, it would recommend or suggest 100, maybe 200 variations of that paragraph because it will not understand the complexity of the context. Um, we're getting there, but it's not there yet. So you as the writer, this is your responsibility. ProWriting Aid is your writing assistant, but it's your responsibility to make the edits. Only you know the context and the meaning of this paragraph, its entirety. So what you should be focusing on is the long sentences, editing those down into sh two shorter or more sentences, and the long words. So words like expeditious, okay? There are much better alternatives to expeditious. I'm sure you will know of some that will help improve your readability score. And once you've made those changes, rerun the report and look at the improvements. And if you're truly stuck on a difficult to read or slightly difficult to read paragraph, you can also use some of these reports in concert. So oftentimes the style report has readability suggestions that if you take those, it will often help with these readability scores. And then the sticky sentences report too can also help you get your readability down to an easier to read level. Yeah, absolutely. There is another little tool inside her writing as well. I just want to show you. Uh, because this helps with vocabulary. So you've seen the thesaurus report, that's well worth exploring if you, well, I say if you're interested by words, but the truth is as humans, we tend to use very narrow vocabularies. So the thesaurus report will really help you broaden your vocabulary. But there's also the word explorer. And if I double click on any word in a document, the word explorer appears and lists a whole range of synonyms that I could use instead of expeditious. I can open the full explorer and it gives me detailed definitions of that particular word, as well as things like a reverse dictionary, a thesaurus of synonyms and contextually related words, even down to collocation. So what are the typical adjectives I might use before or after a word like expeditious? So use that as a way of broadening your vocabulary range. It will have benefits, it will um, pay dividends in the quality of your document and the engagement in your document. Repetition is one of the biggest issues that causes our readers to turn off or to switch off. Okay, so let's, um, Micah mentioned sticky sentences. Um, I think it's one of our favorite reports, most people who work here. It's unique to ProWriting Aid. Um, and what it's doing is looking for the sentences that slow your readers down. They are sticky. How it does that is it looks for glue words. So glue words are the 200 most commonly used words in the English language. They are prepositions and articles that we use all the time. And they're really important, but they don't provide the contextual meaning of the sentence. They're not the working words. The words that bring your writing to life more than anything are verbs. They're the words that deliver the meaning and bring, them on and, 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 um, and bring your writing to life. If your sentence has more than 40% of its words as glue words, then we class that as sticky. So what we're looking at here is sentences that effectively, where you could say the same thing, but with fewer words. So if we have a look, you can see 12 out of the 17 words here are classed as glue words. Um, and you can see the tool, this is a, a new development with ProWriting Aid, but the tool is trying to rewrite that sentence in a less sticky way. Okay, now it may not be perfectly correct because don't forget it's looking to unpick the context here, but it will give you an idea of how you could rewrite this sentence. Essentially, you should just be focusing on delivering the same information, but with fewer words. So rather than saying, just wanted to circle back about the project we talked about around the last month or so, I might just say, 
um, just get in touch, just getting in touch about the project. Okay. Again, you are the best person to judge what the right um, edit is here. So here we go. The rest of the company is not as expeditious in, catch, expeditious in catching up with us. Suggestions are the rest of the company is slower than us. The rest of the company is slow in catching up. The rest of the company is slow in catching up with us. So you might use one of those or just make a, your, your own edit, change a little bit further. But this is a really good catch. It is going to spot the sentences that will slow your reader down again and lead to disengagement. Okay. So I think that's all of the reports. Any others we wanted to show, Michael? I think that's everything report-wise so far. I Let's... think so. And I think probably considering time, we want to take a look at Chrome and take a look at programming it everywhere. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I have got Chrome, the Chrome window here. So I use uh, Gmail for my email client. Um, and I've got the Chrome extension installed up here, as you can see. We have extensions for all major browsers, which means that most web apps you're using will be covered. So if you're using, for example, Salesforce or HubSpot, what you'll see is exactly like I'm seeing here. You write text in an active text window and it will start checking and doing exactly what we saw in the web editor. Okay. And I can do all of that functionality that I saw in the web editor. I can make the changes. I can ignore. I can add to dictionary. Um, I can even open the contextual learning window. If I want to go further and run those deeper reports down here, this pro writing ed icon is, will allow me to open first and foremost, that goal sidebar that we saw and talked about, but then actually the full editor. So if this were a longer document, I can open that full editor in my browser. I can do an edit using the Pro writing aid reports, you see the UI is exactly the same. So there's familiarity there. And then I can apply those changes back to my document. So you really are accompanied every step of the way with the Chrome extension. And it's no surprise that this is our most popular uh, integration for, for pro writing aid, particularly for pro writing aid business users. Um, obviously, there are millions of web applications out there. We can't guarantee it works with every single one. But most of those that you use on a daily basis. Now, for other applications, maybe those that you've downloaded, maybe you're using Slack or Slice or Notion as a desktop app. We've recently re released a native application that we call Pro Writing Aid Everywhere. It's only released in its Windows version at the moment, but Mac is hot on its heels. We'll be releasing the beta of Mac within the next few weeks, hopefully. And one of the things we're most proud about with Pro Writing Aid Everywhere is it is the first grammar spell checker that integrates with PowerPoint. Now, I don't have a slick presentation, but I have got a sample PowerPoint slide here. Uh, and so this is something that's just a PowerPoint slide with some text you can see. If I focus on this particular window uh, and my text box here, you'll see those highlights. And that's Pro Writing Aid working within PowerPoint. I click on the highlights, it brings up the same pop-up with the option to make a one-click change or add to dictionary or ignore. I can make contextual learning is available here too. So once again, I can do everything here um, from the real-time editor's pers perspective that I could do in the web editor as well. As a team, this is probably one of the developments we're most excited about. If you have previously been using our desktop app, let's say, I know this is probably rarer for our business users, but let's say you use Scrivener or a program like that, Pro Writing, uh, Pro Writing Aid Everywhere is going to be basically right up your alley because you're no longer going to need to use the desktop app and import files. You can just have it right there in the app as you're working. Yeah, it's a real game changer and it's hardly mm -hmm. surprising that We've seen the usage of this in the three or four weeks since we actually released the um, the full version has climbed dramatically as people see that it adds that extra touch, that extra layer that we weren't covering before. So anywhere you're using down, downloaded applications, this native app will um, will have your back. And if you have not had the chance to check it out yet, I will be putting links to Pro Writing Aid Everywhere for Windows as well as Pro Writing Aid Everywhere for Mac in the chat. 
Okay, so um, a couple of things just to mention before we start wrapping up. One is around, uh, because we're business users here today, I wanted to highlight a couple of features around kind of management. So as a team license holder, if, you're, if you have pro writing aid teams, which means you have multiple licenses grouped together, um, you can access a team user management portal that allows you to manage all of your licenses. If people leave your team, you can remove that license and reassign it to somebody else. It also gives you visibility of metrics and dashboards. So you'll see here that I have a team analytics dashboard, which is one of two dashboards I can look at. Team analytics tells me how engaged my team are, how many active users I have in a set period of time, what percentage of my um, team population that represents, and also, really importantly, how many suggestions they're accepting. So how many improvements are they making? And what does that represent in terms of cost saving, both in terms of that time period, but also as an all time overview. And then we have another option just here on the team activity that will list all the people in your team and show you exactly who's using the tool the most. So you, you can get an idea of who's engaging with the tool, but also who might need extra support. Um, final point is our style guide. And again, I'm gonna highlight this just because for business users, this is one of the most requested features. When I mention style guide, what I'm really talking about is custom rules. So you can build custom rules. And when I apologize back at the top of this meeting uh, about some of the, you saw, may have seen some of the highlights for Weasel Words, those were custom rules I've been testing for a specific client. I'm gonna show you very, very quickly an example of how custom rule works. This is a basic example that is essentially a find and replace. We've got, uh, it's a brand uh, issue from the University of Pennsylvania, who were a little bit tired of all their staff and students uh, slipping into the habit of using Pennsylvania University when their brand name is University of Pennsylvania. So they create a really simple match. So you enter a wrong sentence, you create a, uh, you list the actual match, the words you're looking to highlight and then the replacement term university of pennsylvania and then the message and once i've tested the rule if it's green that means it's good to go i can then take that rule go into a sample document let's just create a bit of space here and turn on the real-time checker and you should see oh sorry that's off there we go. So there's the rule that I've created. Now, like I said, that's a really simple example, but we do have, we've got a couple of blog articles. I'm not sure if Mike has shared the link, but we can follow up with these. A couple of articles on our blogs about how to write more complex star guide rules. And these can not only be really powerful, they can also be quite addictive because they save hours and hours of time checking for consistency among your team. So we use these a lot at ProWritingAid to define certain word and terminology formats. You can see it can go into areas of plain English where I'm defining particular verbs to use uh, and words not to use. So I really recommend if you're part of a brand team or communications team where consistency is an issue, explore our star guide rules. I can see, yeah, Mike has just posted the, the links already explore our style guide rules and get in touch for help. We are here to help with those. And with that, I think we're pretty much ready to get into some questions. All right, Tom, just taking a look at the Q&A. Let's see. I actually do have one around style guide rules, which is we have a couple of users that thought that maybe making these rules was a little complex. Um, do we have any way that we can actually design those rules for them so their team is not having to spend all of their time programming them. Yeah, it's a really good point. So um, Starguide, the interface is designed so that you can, if you want to, um, get in and experiment and write rules for yourself. But as we've said, some of these do get quite complex. Um, and uh, we have an, a dedicated NLP team, so Natural Language Pro Processing Team here at Pro Writing Aid. Uh, who spend uh, a lot of their time working on these rules. And if you have a style guide that you want us to automate, then by all means, get in touch and share it with us. We can do that um, as a professional service. Uh, it's something we do on a regular basis. I think our most recent client had 
Uh, it was around about 180 separate rules. We were able to automate about 70 to 80% of them. Obviously, there are some that don't lend themselves to kind of being converted into rules, uh, in machine learning rules. But by and large, we can cover most things. So by all means, get in touch, share your SAR guide rules with us, and we'll let you know how we can help. All right, great, Tom. So then we actually have another one kind of along the lines of um, just information about where we get our corrections from. So I know a lot of folks are used to perhaps having their own writing used to train these AI models. And how are we different? Yes, we are different. And it's an, a really important differentiator because what we're talking about here is privacy. So who owns your writing? Okay, and we know there are some uh, apps out there on the marketplace that many users will use and they won't realize that by using them, you're signing up and licensing your writing or pro giving permission for that um, software company to use your writing and claim rights to that writing. And they do that partly because they'll claim that they are training their machine learning models using your data. And we don't do that. We train our machine learning models. We're constantly training and improving the recall and accuracy of our machine learning models on data that we acquire from professional editors. So we have no need to store your text. We have no need to use your text or to claim any rights to your text whatsoever. Um, we do that, like I said, with third party, or we do our training with third party text that we acquire. So in kind of connected to that, Tom, can we go over a little bit about our security? Just because I know in business, especially, we have a lot of users that are concerned about the security of their documents. All yeah. Connected. Yeah, absolutely, Micah. So as we can all appreciate, this kind of level of um, analysis can't take place on your individual laptop. It requires really heavy resource um, to run the GPUs and the machines that do the analysis. So all of us, all providers in this marketplace are transmitting and sending your text for analysis uh, to various places around the world. Now, we prioritize security here at Pro Writing Aid. As it's really important that we are guaranteeing that how we handle data is as good as it can possibly be. So that means that we partner with Microsoft Azure as our cloud service provider. We use their data center in the West US. So all data remains or is transmitted to the US for analysis. The important, well, a couple of important points here. One is the encryption. So we use TLS 1.2. It's really high level, bank level security and encryption uh, when we're transmitting text. Uh, and then once your data is, analyze once your text is analyzed is deleted we don't store any form of your text at all so it's returned to you all the html tags are returned to you but we delete your text we're not keeping hold of any copies and that's really important uh, because obviously um, you need to know how secure and how private uh, you know how private your data is being kept right. at all times in fact, the only data persistence our system has anywhere would be if you are saving a document to the web editor, and that is not because we need to analyze your text or anything like that. That's because if you have saved it to the cloud, then we need to be able to pull that back up for you. But Tom, if I'm not mistaken, for Teams, we do have a way to disable that function, correct? Absolutely. Yep. So if you have a Teams license and you want to remove the web editor from your team users, capabilities, if you like, or suite of integrations, then we can disable that um, for you. Yeah. So, all right, I think we have got one more question, and this is around, I guess, a little bit of development. So do we have an API? We do have an API. In fact, we have two versions. We have a full API. So if you want to use ProWriting Aid and create your own reports like you've seen here, or surface the data from those reports, you can do that. Uh, all the documentation is on our website. Um, let's have a take a quick look while we're talking. Uh, and then we have a really lightweight plugin as well. We call it Beyond Grammar. Uh, and this is a, a game change for many software applications that want to integrate high level grammar spelling and style checking within their own application. Beyond Grammar is a rich text editor plugin. So it works with Froala, CK Editor, Tiny MCE. Uh, and provides that really simple real-time checking 
within your application. If you want to find out more about any of the, or either of those rather, just take a look here. You'll see Grammar Checker API. That's our full API and Grammar Checker component. And this is the Beyond Grammar lightweight plugin. You can see it working just here in Tiny MCE. It's just doing what we see the real time checker doing all the time. If you're interested in this for your application, if you have a, a customer facing application or interested in the costs and, and so on, um, just get in touch. All right. Well, Tom, that looks like we have covered all of our questions. So I suppose we can give everybody a couple of extra minutes back to their day. Absolutely. Well, as once again, it's been great having everybody with us today. And if you have got any questions following this call, as Micah said, just reach out, get in touch. We're happy to help. And again, that email address is hello at prowritingaid.com, H-E-L-L-O. All right, everyone. Hope you have a wonderful rest of, you rest of your day or rest of your evenings. We will hopefully see you again soon. Thanks all.